Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Stephen Gilbo was in front of the Environment Committee talking about the Jasper fires. The federal government has spent a lot of money on what they're calling fire preparedness. And the committee was wondering why a third of the town was burned to the ground despite all of the all of this. On the five-minute round, there was a lot of interaction between uh, Gilbo, he was upset by this time, and, and of course the conservative member on the other side, who wasn't asking anything that has to do with the reason that Gilbo is in the headlines. They were talking about the Jasper fire. And I think that as you watch it, you should pay attention to the fact that every time Gilbo was asked a question that would have been answered outside of the word carbon, he had to turn to the people beside him, which I think is why he got really angry, why he tried to blame the conservatives for everything, because he doesn't know what he's doing. Like, he's not an environmental scientist. He's a political scientist. All right, so I left the whole thing. I didn't uh, edit it in any way, shape, or form. I thought about it, and then I thought, you know what? Let's just watch the interaction. Let, let's let people see him snap and snarl and run away and dodge and weave all in an effort to convince everybody that he's something that he isn't. You've come in here, Minister, with quite a lot of bravado. You've talked about the great job that your government's done, that Jasper is the most prepared town for a fire, and yet one third of the town was allowed to burn down. Nearly a billion dollars worth of damage. 2,000 people are homeless. Uh, do you have any humility, Minister? Do you have any, is there any admission that your government could have done more to prevent this fire from destroying one third of the town. What could you have done, Minister? It's, it's quite ironic that your party of all parties would, would, would be talking about that when you oppose systematically Don't every measure we this put in minister. place you to knew fight climate change. You or didn't even take to action adapt, for nine years. Just a second, to second Mr. Lloyd. Change. We're not in question you, period here. You're, you're, so, so, you oppose well, could, could everything. Can we just stop a second? Yes. Stop a second. Just pause for a second. Let's just, let's just calm down and have a, a meaningful exchange. So uh, where were we at? Were you at your answer or your question? I, I'm sorry. I was talking to Mr. Morris. I'm I here apologize. to listen to the minister right now. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I find it incredibly ironic that your party, of, uh, of all the parties in the House of Commons, would be, would be asking these questions when you oppose both measures to fight climate change and measures to adapt to climate change. We, climate change is a reality. You may, you may dispute your this. Your measures may fail not to protect rec- the town recognize of Recognize this, but it's, it, it's real, and we won't prevent. And you are not showing any we humility. Prevent, you're not giving Canadians well, any I'm solace. Sorry, but this is not we about humility and, and modesty, and, and the, we're not, we're not going to get into. I'd like to move on to my next question. Yeah, please thank do. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Minister. In 2017 and in 2018, in multiple letters sent to your predecessor, Catherine McKenna, minister at the time, Ken Hodges and Emil Began who are forestry scientists, warned your government that Parks Canada was not capable of preventing this fire, that the actions that they had taken to date were not capable of preventing these forest fires. They said it was a matter of when, not if. Why did Parks Canada fail to take the actions necessary to prevent this devastating wildfire? I I respectfully disagree with the characterization of, of your question. Andrew, I'm wondering if you want to talk about, I've spoken about some of the things that Parks has done. Maybe you want to add a few things? Yeah, so through the Canadian Interagency uh, Forest Fire um, Council, uh, of course, Parks Canada gets a lot of support and uses a cross-Canada, government-wide, federal, provincial standard of how forest fires are fought, what the information that goes into that. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I'm going to have to cut this off. Well, why? It's 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 going quite slowly. Okay, well, go ahead with your next question. It's your time. In 2018, Minister, your own superintendent of parks, Alan Fair, went on CBC and said, quote, fire is not something that we're actually concerned about. He claims that your department did its homework to protect Jasper. Do you stand by the words of your superintendent? Was fire not a concern in Jasper National Park? Did you do your homework? Yes or no? Since that interview... um, $86 $86 million was... What, what Six what, million dollars. $86 million. For Jasper in, National Park? Yes. Oh, some of it for Jasper, some of it for the other national parks. All in, across the in country. Alberta. Mr. Compared, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. To Lloyd excuse mil- me, I'm going to stop the compared time. Compared to we, the we $2 million... To, I, 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 excuse me. I, I, I like robust debate myself, personally, and, and I have no problem with that, but please let the minister answer the question you know, so, you. so that we can find out the truth or the, an approximation of it. Go ahead. 
So since that interview was done, $86 million was invested compared to $2 million when you were in power. $2 million, $86 million. That's false, Minister. That's But I will go on. In 2020, your government announced $6.9 million over three years for Jasper National Park. The Alberta Forest Products Association, an open letter in 2017, said it would take $85 million to protect the park. And yet your government only invested $6.9 million over three years? The test... The proof is in the pudding. A third of the town of Jasper burned down, and you're here to this committee bragging about a $6 million investment? It's not nearly enough, Minister. En fait, vous, vous faites erreur, c'est 6.9... You are wrong. It was a $6.9 million for pine beetle infestation. But it was uh, $79 million uh, total. So it's wrong to say it was just $6 million. We added $79 million after that. Why was thousands of hectares of dead pine beetle infested trees allowed to be in close proximity to town of Jasper? Thousands of hectares. Your government says that you've removed 1,700 hectares since 2014. Well, in a 2022 report, your own department said that they only removed 1.6 hectares of white park pine. Like, there are thousands of hectares of dead pine beetle trees in the vicinity of Jasper. Why were these allowed to stay there when they represented a serious threat to the town? All these experts knew it. Why didn't you remove them? So um, through the 1,700 uh, hectares that were removed, so, you know, about 17 square kilometres, which is about eight times the size of the town of Jasper, just to put it in perspective for In people, a million square hectare park. Correct, but with a lot of that park not being the town. We can all agree to that, yes. I'm sure. So within that, you had a large buffer zone, and a buffer zone... And on top of that, and, you know, Landon is the vegetation and fire specialist out of Banff. Um, How much time on top of, oh. on, sorry, on top of that, we have a whole series of ramp types of, of you know, there's a, a large, and I don't want to just call it a sprinkler system, but a high-powered sprinkler system that protects the town that goes up, you know, 12 meters in height that protects a large area of I'm, the I'm sorry, I'm going to have to All cut it off here. We're way of, over time. We're okay. way over time. But uh, anyway. Uh, I, mean. I think the Minister Gilbo came in ready for an argument, and he wasn't prepared to answer questions about why the fire got out of control, despite all of his claims that he this was the most prepared city in all of the country. He ignored the dead wood that was all around it because of the pine needle, beetle, excuse me, and when he was asked a question about those things, he had to turn to the guy beside him. Now, in other questions, he turned to the other guy beside him. He didn't answer any of those kinds of questions, right? And all he tried to do was say that the conserv- it's all the conservatives' fault. I mean, these guys have been in, in office for nearly 10 years. There's the changes that we've had between, like, you know what? They'll say to you, oh, no, look at how different the world is today. Okay, so if the world is different, then why aren't you doing something about it right now instead of trying to live in 2014? It's 2024 now. You weren't ready for the fire. Things got put down. Problems happened that you didn't solve based on all of these taxpayers' dollars that you're spending. So what are you doing to make sure that it doesn't happen again instead of just blaming the government that sat before you that was 10 years ago? You let me know what you think. Do you think that he sounded like he knew what he was doing or, or do you at least agree with my assessment? All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.